hi so welcome to another video on the channel and this time i wanna like list my top 10 favorite sci-fi reads so far um as of 2023 because i hope it will change because that will mean that i'll that i'm reading a lot of good books and i'm planning to read a lot of sci-fi so yeah hopefully this will change a lot <laughs> but yeah th these are as of right now my top 10 favorite sci-fi reads and i i don't really have like a ranking these are just the top 10 and i love pretty much all of them about the same amount okay so the first entry is i'm just looking at like good reads here uh, so the first one i want to talk about is actually a graphic novel it's called saga by brian k vaughn and the artist is i believe fiona staples hope i'm right but yeah so this is basically a graphic novel about uh two a pair of lovers from uh, two different sides of a war, basically. A lot of people say it's like Star Wars for adults. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but it is definitely for adults. It doesn't hold back on the violence or anything else. And it's just, it's hilarious. Like the characters feel real because of the fact that they just don't hold back. It feels very authentic. And the, the world building is very unique in a way that is just unhinged but in the best possible way so yeah there's there have been like 10 volumes i think and it just gets better every time i think um next i want to talk about a book that i've talked before in my previous previous video and that is the dispossessed by ursula k Le Guin. I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna talk too much about it anymore because of that so if you want to hear my like my thoughts on it more then you should check out my previous video but yeah, uh, this is my second Ursula K. Le Guin book. I've, I've read the first Earthsea book, which I didn't like all that much, to be honest. But this one really got me. It got me thinking a lot of different thoughts, I guess. And yeah, I, I really want to explore more of her Hainish cycle or whatever the series is called. I haven't even read The Left Hand of Darkness, which is supposed to be even better. So yeah. Oh, next we have either Golden Sun or Lightbringer. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, but I'm just gonna do like one ser one book per series. So this is like an entry for the Red Rising series as a whole. Uh, I, I can't really decide whether Golden Sun or Lightbringer is better because they're both like really fantastic. So yeah, let's, let's leave it at, at that. I think this series as a whole is one of those that um, the first book isn't all that great because it tries to capitalize on the young adult trend. Like a lot of people say that it's kind of like um, the Hunger Games or whatever. And I kind of agree with that. I think after the first book, it gets progressively less, you know, juvenile, I guess. And it gets more and more interesting with the characters being more, well, being more explored, I guess. And yeah, it's just such a fantastic series, and I can't wait for the uh, final book, yeah, which is supposed to come out next year, I think. Um, next, we have Nemesis Games by James S. A. Corey. And yeah, I haven't read the entirety of The Expanse. I've read six books, which is where the TV series stopped. I'm still saving the final few books. Um, for when I finally miss the series because the series isn't coming back so I don't want to finish it too soon I guess and um, honestly this is one of those things where the TV series actually did some things better than the book and yeah if you like sci-fi you should definitely both watch the series and also read the books and this Nemesis Games is book 5 I believe and yeah it's really fantastic. Um, next, oh yeah, this is probably the newest entry, or maybe not. I mean, newest entry to the series, because this is the, the most recent one that I read, I think. And that is How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia Nagamatsu. This, this book is a true, like, epic. And it's similar to another book that I will be talking about a bit later. It takes place in the near future, but it takes it's like a collection of short stories and they're somewhat connected to each other. There's like a, 
there's a there's a bigger story like going on going on in the background of all of those stories and it's done so well and each of them stand well on its own as well and they deal with a lot of very heavy topics like grief and then at the end it becomes something even more weird but in the best possible way because it it takes all of those and gives it this really weird sci-fi spin that i didn't think i would like but i ended up feeling like it's the it's the perfect way to end the book basically it's it's an amazing book next we have hyperion by dan simmons um, i don't think i need to say a lot about this book because it's well it's a sci-fi classic and i think it's a sci-fi classic for a reason it's another book that i've talked about before so you can check out my previous video if you want to talk more if you want to hear me talk more about it and oh yeah so this next one is two novellas uh, and that is a song for the wild bill and a prayer for the crown shy both by becky chambers uh, it's both of them are part of the the monk and robot duology to be honest i don't understand why it's split into a duology i mean it's like thirty-five thousand words and thirty-five thousand words so if you just make it into a single novel it would be a perfectly fine novel like the story works well as a novel i think and yeah I, a lot of people like prefer her longer books like the long way to a small angry planet which i do love but i think her stories w work better shorter like in in a shorter like what is it the shorter page count and yeah this is just perfect it's it's like cozy sci-fi but it feels like fantasy so if you like cozy fantasy books you should pick this one up and it's really philosophical in a way that never feels preachy because sometimes when an, a book is philosophical it can feel a bit a bit preachy but it never felt that way for me with this book and you're just full of wonderful characters and wonderful writing and yeah i absolutely loved it yeah i finished both of these like and i finished two of those books in a day basically next we have children of time by adrian tchaikovsky so i think there are three books in the series i still haven't read the sequels but i remember i remember reading this like Quite a long time ago actually at this point and i i was just blown away like so I, because of that i still remember a lot about this book even though i read it like five or six years ago at this point and it's one of those books that really made me believe that sci-fi is actually um underrated in a way that a lot of people usually look down on sci-fi as non-serious literature or whatever but this book is one of the first books that make me feel like th that shouldn't be the case. Like people shouldn't look down on sci-fi just because it's sci-fi. And yeah, the the ideas and the the way the ideas are applied in the world building, in the characters, it's just something special, I think. And if you wanna if you wanna read a sci-fi book that is unique and have a lot of uh, really well thought out you know uh aliens i guess you can check out this book it's it's really thick but i think it's definitely worth the read oh next we have another another book kind of like the ones one of the ones that i mentioned before and that is cloud atlas and like like how high we go in the dark it's a collection of novellas i guess or short stories whatever and it's they are not not directly connected but they are somewhat connected and there's also uh like a hidden story in, in in the background and yeah so david mitchell is one of my favorite authors i used one of his books as my uh as the object for my like uh bachelor's thesis and not this one though but anyways yeah that's a story for another video i guess yeah but yeah I, I love David Mitchell's writing. It's very versatile. Like he can he can write so many different characters in so many different voices and do it all equally well. And I think this book is just an example of that. And also in the movie adaptation is also 
really great. I think it's the Wachowski's like most underrated movie probably. Anyways, going back to the book, yeah, it's um, yeah, I just love it. And I remember reading this for the first time, and I think I was like sixteen, seventeen at that time. I already saw the movie, but I wanted to read the book anyway, and I was still blown away by it. And I remember finishing this book at around like two or three a.m., and I was blasting the the movie soundtrack. While I was reading the couple like final few pages or whatever, and it was just one of the most memorable reading experiences I've had so far. And yeah, it's just an amazing book. And finally, we have another book written by an author who is often considered not a sci-fi author, kind of like David Mitchell, and that is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. And yeah. I'm a fan of Kazuo Ishiguro, both his like uh, l- literary works and his more sci-fi fantasy works. I think this is by far his best one when it comes to sci-fi fantasy. It's so emotional and it's so... S- the premise is quite simple. I don't want to spoil it, of course. It's one of those books where it would be better for you going into it without knowing anything, really. So, yeah. I think um, Never Let Me Go is one of those sci-fi books that a lot of non-sci-fi readers still would still like anyway, and that's probably one of the reasons why Ishiguro is not considered a sci-fi writer. Like, he's got a Nobel Prize, so yeah, he's a proper literary, I guess. And yeah, just it, it's one of the most like emotional books that I've read. A lot of people, I mean, a lot of authors try to be in. To, to have emotional scenes, but I don't think a lot of authors can do it as well as Ishiguro, and especially in this book. So yeah, those are my top 10 favorite sci-fi books. I think I've gotten all of them, but yeah. So if you enjoy my videos and you want to see more of it, then feel free to like the video and you know subscribe as usual. And yeah, just want to say thanks for watching.